Hey everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to discuss about one of the advanced topic, which is uh, how to bypass CSRF or how to exploit the CSRF using the cross-site scripting. Um, make sure you do watch the previous video if you are not clear about the CSRF vulnerability. Uh, so in the previous video we discussed about the basics of the CSRF and, and how do you attack it. Now, often the times, uh, like in, in many web applications, you will see the CSRF, uh, like, you know, protections, which is uh, having the random session tokens, or sorry, random CSRF token ID, uh, and which, which is the same thing we discussed in the previous video. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how do we use the AJAX, uh, and I'll actually show you and walk you through the payload that I, I have created to bypass this uh, protection. So we're gonna use the Ajax, and the reason for that is uh, it's a like you know sometimes as to bypass the CSRF you need to uh, frame a complicated request which requires to add certain headers, and that's sometimes not possible by just using like you know inline JavaScript. And second thing, uh, oftentimes you also need to bypass the same origin header, and CSRF essentially we do not need to read the response. What attacker's intention is to execute the request. And, and whatever the actions that performed by the act uh, that request, uh, like you know, attacker can leverage that later on. And the third thing is uh, we can use the Ajax event handler to determine whether we succeeded or failed. So uh, don't worry if you don't don't understand right away. I'm gonna walk you through the payload uh, that we, we're gonna see how you can use for any uh, application that you will find the cross site scripting in the future. Uh, next thing, why do we use XSS and why do we even need XSS to bypass the CSRF? So the best defense against cross site request forgery is using the random tokens. Now, with using the cross site scripting, we will uh, we will read the random tokens because that's the most critical piece and, and unknown piece for the attacker, and it's like you know reading the session token of someone. So if you can read that random token then you can easily craft the request and then submit that stolen token with the request. So let's not like, you know, discuss much about theory. Let's get on to the uh, one of our demo system and, and I'll show you how you can actually do that in the real world. Now, uh, in this application, of course, I'm gonna show you in this test application, but this works exactly same in the real world application. I have tried that so many times previously. So first off, make sure you have a uh, burp proxy configured or or, uh, or zap either one is fine uh, here uh, I'm just gonna show you real quick how the cross uh, request forgery works uh, so here if you try to submit like you know add to your blog it's gonna uh, intercept here and as you can see the CSR token has some random value now of course in this case we know that but in real world scenario, you wouldn't know uh, what token has been given to the user, right? So you have to guess it. So for example, if I guess it to be like, let's say 555 instead of 777, because uh, as, a, as an attacker, I don't know what the token is. I forward the request, I got the response. Let's see if our blog was added. No, uh, it says uh, security violation, attempt detected, cross site request forgery and it, it denied our request. So as an attacker, what we need to do is, we need a way to steal this token and submit a request without user notice, noticing it. So that's a really tricky part and that's what I'm gonna show you today. So first off, uh, we need to find a cross-site scripting vulnerability in this application. And I think uh, given this is a, like, you know, you can use any of this, but I'm gonna, for simplicity, let's just use this one. So here, uh, let's submit our payload and, and just, let's just confirm like this is vulnerable to CSRF oh sorry cross site scripting so script alert and then script right okay so this is obviously vulnerable to cross site scripting now <clears throat> how you find cross site scripting is not in like you know part of this video we have done several videos on that like how do we uh, how do we find the cross-site scripting how do we bypass the filter etc the goal for you is whenever you find the cross-site scripting in any web application you should be able to exploit the cross-site request forgery and oftentimes i've also uh, heard words of like it's called xsrf so make sure <clears throat> you 
you, you like the only prerequisite for you to explore the CSRF is to find the cross site scripting. And that's actually uh, yeah, like an increase the impact of this vulnerability because uh, when you find just the cross site scripting to steal the session tokens, now you can also do uh, much more things. So, first off, let me show you the uh, payload that we're gonna use. So, this is my uh, first payload here. We, uh, so, my intention here just to uh, show or maybe just to uh, demonstrate how we can steal the CSRF token. So this is my uh, AJAX request. Uh, this is my URL. So this is the same URL uh, which we want to exploit on this page. So here, if you go to this uh, request, add to your blog, right? So this is the same uh, page we're gonna exploit. Uh, this is uh, like you know the function which is standard on AJAX, like on ready state change. It will first uh, get the request ready, then it will read the response. So it will send the request, it will read the response, and it will store the token. So from response, we're gonna get element by name, and of course, as a uh, as you have seen in the previous video, we must know the parameter name. So we know here, and we steal the token and put in in the variable, and then we alert my token. So this will at least give us the idea whether we are able to steal the token, and then we have to accomplish the task of how do we submit this token right without user noticing it so that I'll show you in the in the couple of seconds so uh, this is the first one so let's let's try this uh, first so because this is uh, let me open the burp okay it's intercept on let's submit this so here I need to inject that my payload here of course I cannot inject like just simply copy and paste and add it in the request so what I've done is I hosted that JavaScript on my local server of course you can do it on 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 any of your server where you have some web server running so what I'm gonna do is src http localhost uh, xss still csrf Yes. Okay. Uh, did I get the name right? Uh, still CSRF. JS. Still CSRF. JS. Local. Okay. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't, uh, we'll see. Okay. This should be okay. All right. So this this should if it works correctly, then uh, it should give us token yes there you go so okay so that worked so now as you can see with the cross site scripting and since we knew the parameter uh, where the CSRF token is used and and that's that's very common like as an attacker you would know what's the parameter because you are one of the authenticated user on the system so we know the uh, session token as uh, sorry, the CSRF token now our goal now is to submit this token right so uh, if we can submit the token and then uh, what we're supposed what we should be able to see is we can add arbitrary values on this block behalf of user without user noticing it so in the real world you can like you know uh, transfer some money from users account without he, uh, him or her being noticed or you can do so many activities which we discussed previously so I'm not gonna go into that so next one we're gonna see is the exploit CSRF so I guess this part is the same what we uh, discussed before but here I'm gonna calling this function which is do XSRF right now oh in the previous one I forgot to uh, tell you so like you can here also uh, like you know change the response type you can also uh, chain the request method depending on uh, which page you are you want to exploit and then you just uh, send this right so here I'm gonna uh, Okay, send the response type and everything. So this is the main function which will allow as me as an attacker to submit this the stolen token and and submit to the blog so here I'm gonna do a new request which is post right and this is the URL, so it's the same URL, but rather than get, now we, we are gonna do the post request. This is my payload. So payload is, so the blog entry will be XSRF for the demo. 
then here is the button that we're gonna submit and the token is the one which was stolen by me from the function above then we set up the content type here you can of course do the JSON or, or whatever the content it is length you can set it connection close it and then uh, like you know send the payload once this is ready so uh, if this this works then we should be able to see the entry XSRF for the demo in our this page so let me actually keep that open here so right now as you can see we don't have this entry so let's go through that exercise again I'm gonna intercept the request here uh, okay. so we're gonna intercept the request and then let's go back uh, let's copy our payload from the previous request and instead of calling steel CSRF I think the name of the file is exploit CSRF okay so I'm gonna do exploit CSRF okay everything else looks good uh, I'm just gonna submit the page now for better clarity so I guess the it submitted we didn't see any result but uh, hopefully that's entry is added to the block so before we check that so what you can also do is you can also like you know alert the token here uh, if you are if you're not sure if you, like if you want to debug right uh, that's what we do uh, during the development of this uh, during development any system you put the alert or, or something so you know where the f a function failed but let's see if uh, so I'm gonna refresh now and as you can see we have this added so now here as you could see uh, like when we submitted the request right we did not uh, okay probably this is the old one but anyway but we did not submit the CSRF token at all we did not need that only thing we wanted was successful cross-site scripting and as you as soon as you find it you can just uh, like you know uh, have this uh, Ajax function and, and the, the reason for Ajax is it's it's it uh, it does that without refreshing the page so it without like you know refreshing pages too many times if you are doing like multi multiple requests it does it in the background without user noticing it and that's the main beauty of it so we are still gonna use it and of course you can put all this like you know headers and everything append in the request and, and then exploit it so this was a, a, a like you know a, a, I guess advanced demo of how you can do the cross set uh, request forgery or how you can exploit the cross set request forgery I know it it might have been not very much clear uh, like you know you may have to practice this couple of times so I would advise practice it on the same website which I've done once you get the confidence you can also be able to try in your future engagement when you are doing the penetration testing on on like real world applications uh, this will be uh, super useful in the future when you're when you're trying to show the impact to the clients or customers why they should fix the cross-site scripting or why they should like you know really uh, be focused about the input uh, validation and output encoding all right so that, that's it uh, from me uh, this week uh, next week we'll we'll cover one of one more advanced topic uh, probably LDAP injection so stay tuned for that thank you so much for watching uh, follow me uh, on the Facebook uh, which is cybersecure TV and hit the thumbs up button if you like this video subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next week bye